Um, if you want to start by introducing yourself, this is a guest speaker for the Art Institute Museum 3D um, uh, advisory team. And uh, if you could start by introducing yourself and then take it from there. Um, hi, my name's Pippa, and I work in the Science Museum in London. Uh, I'm a content developer uh, in the um, in the contemporary science team there. So we develop exhibitions and events all about contemporary science as opposed to a history of science. Oh, yeah, I might just turn my screen off as well. Um, and uh, the Science Museum is a free-to-enter museum, as are all the national museums in the UK, uh, which uh, sort of changes some of the dynamics uh, maybe around the sort of people we get visiting us. Um, so as part of uh, what we were, uh, the contemporary science team's output, we have been doing a lot of stuff around 3D printing. Um, so we pr produced uh, an exhibition called 3D Printing the Future, uh, which launched in October. So the summer before that, we did a whole summer of 3D stuff uh, across the museum and across different departments uh, that uh, went down very well with the public, uh, more or less. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's about me. Okay, so um, I thought I'd just start by running you through the things we, uh, the things I did personally this summer, and then the stuff that went on sort of across the museum as a whole. Um, so uh, the, well, my favourite event that I did over the summer was uh, a 3D scanning event. So I think probably the easiest thing to do would be if you play the YouTube video that um, I sent you the link for. Yeah. Um, and I will try and, uh, yeah, and I can, um, it will give you a really good overview of what the event looked like. Um, so this video um, appeared on our, uh, appears in the exhibition, the, um, in the 3D printing the future exhibition, as an explanation of why we've got lots of little people nailed to the wall, um, because that's what we have now. I, you are seeing an introduction to the event, so we, uh, to make it clear like how this process worked, um, uh, we had this uh, young man called Elliot, who I expect you can see. So uh, we scanned people by sitting, standing them on a spinny um, rotating plate. They were they were spun around, and a we connect, so really basic tech, um, uh, just scan them up and down a few times. They were spun around twice or three times uh, whilst po t taking a pose, um, and then we saved that data. And at a latest, a much later stage, we had a company print out uh, around a hundred of them for us, um, and uh, then well, we nailed them to our wall. Okay, so you didn't, uh, it wasn't for the people to take, it was um, at, no. at part of an exhibition. Okay. Yeah, so, it, and like, uh, we scanned about, I think I think about 300 of our visitors, some of them were in pairs. I think, apart, I don't know if you got to the bit of the video where it flashed up all the people who, um, in one day, who got scanned. Uh, and now it's just printing the printing one of the guys. And we see you, yeah. Super. Yes, no, that's me, uh, with my excellent 3D printing skills. It was very much, I was the only other person there filming, so it had to be me. <laughs> uh, it, makes, it makes me look like a, the expert I am absolutely not uh, with that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, and it, so if, uh, once the video finishes, um, if you look, um, some of the images I sent over, um, there are a few, so uh, there's one titled Little People with a woman holding... Uh, a small version of herself in front of um, some plastic figurines, so you can see what, how they, the sort of range that we ended up printing out. Um, and then we've got uh, some shots of, um, um, you can sort of see the wall behind her uh, as well. Um, so uh, the, the woman holding up the, uh, she's actually a celebrity in the UK, although you won't have heard of her, but <laughs> so uh, that famous all? enough that it got some press. So as far as people that did get their own, it was kind of a specialized kind of... Yeah, we we, we scanned three celebrities. Um, mm -hmm. So um, Evan Davis, who is the man looking with the, the close face shot with the little man looking at his mini-me. Um, he's, yeah. a, he's a radio and TV presenter in the UK. Uh, Jenny Agata is... Um, uh, an actress who's quite famous and then we had Lily Cole who's a supermodel she came in and was uh, except she didn't come and pick hers up her sister did so we haven't got any nice pictures of that unfortunately. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we've only got so many so much sway with these celebs but, uh, anyway it was very nice of her to come in and be scanned uh, and they got color versions of theirs because it looked better for the press photos but uh, the rest of them we printed out in the block color I mean partly for because um, we were a company that um, printed them out for us very kindly did it for free um, with 
they got a very big thank you at the end of our exhibition. So um, we had to have we couldn't have had everyone printed in colour. That wouldn't have been affordable. Um, but it was a people. So people when they came in, um, they were informed about. Um, uh, so we did have a 3D printer running there, and we were printing out uh, loads of little Evan Davises actually, because he came in on one of the first days. So we they managed to put put together his data very quickly overnight so that we were able to print, lo we just printed out loads and loads of him so that people get an idea of what it would be like to see themselves printed because the amount of data that went into uh, putting putting their scanned image together was so great that processing it would, uh, I think it took a couple of, I mean on a, uh, it took a couple of hours sort of per person and they were using quite big com computers with lots of uh, processing power so that, that was a limit and it would have been lovely if we could have printed them out um, uh, on the go or they could have come and collected them later but given the amount and I, it took about two minutes three minutes to scan somebody so we had such a high turnover of people that it just wouldn't have been possible to print everybody out but a proportion of the people who got scanned can come and see them can come and try and spot themselves on our wall at the exhibition so having that um, uh, that that's a relationship with people knowing that they could come back for a reason and see our exhibition was was great and a, a lot of people um, uh, really, uh, because we had the data, the data was um, easy enough for us to get. We a lot of people emailed us um, to ask for their scan data so they could take it away and um, print it themselves. Because uh, uh, there's there's quite a few 3D printing shops that are popping up, especially in London and Birmingham. Um, so you can get, or you can just send away on the internet. So people were paying themselves to have themselves printed out since we'd done the scanning bit for them, which is something they obviously wouldn't necessarily have access to. Um, when you gave that to them, did you worry about if it had holes or those kind of things? Were they processed, or you just sent whatever you had? Yeah, we were only able to send them the and like some of the pro, sometimes sometimes the processing didn't work. There was something wrong with the data. We had big problems with uh, people with blonde hair and any shiny mm. clothing. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was it was that yeah it was a surprise for all of us. But yeah, bl white and so very very reflective surfaces, and for some reason, blonde hair is reflective enough that it's problematic. Also, people with curly hair, it was very tough to process their data because it's a really curly hair is an incredibly complex structure compared to a nice pinned back ponytail kind of thing. <laughs> uh, bald yeah, bald men were our ideal. That's they're perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, because it's much simpler than real hair, uh, so that was these. Are, I mean, it was interesting because the, the company we um, did this with had done a little bit of experimenting with printing people, but they mainly uh, with scanning people. But they mainly scanned museum objects. So they go into a museum, scan something for the museum, so they can get a, a really realistic um, copy of something, and uh, I, I don't know, play with it, uh, sort of um, see what it's like up close, use it as um, an object handling kind of thing, or sell it in the shop as a plastic version of it, or um, things like that. So that was the majority of what they'd done. So it was a learning curve for them as well, um, which was interesting. And um, yeah, we we all we all learned a lot about uh, scanning. Um, and um, it was, uh, but no, it went fairly smoothly. And I, I mean, the big surprises for us were how long people were willing to queue for to be scanned, even though we were very clear there was no guarantee that they would even be in the exhibition or that, you know, they weren't going to get anything physical out of it. People would queue for, we had people queuing for an hour to be spun round on the thing and um, scanned, which was amazing. So we had to come up with quite a lot of queue um, entertaining tactics. So we've got lots of little toys that kids can play with uh, to entertain them in the queue and things like that so people weren't getting too bored. But I, we couldn't believe quite how popular it was. We were we were pleasantly surprised on, on that front. But uh, yeah. Um, so right, so that's 3D scanning. Um, is there anything else particularly you'd like to know about it? I'm trying to think if there's anything... Um, uh, I mean, people were just really people were really fascinated by the technology in general, and because um, people were able to see a, an image of themselves um, immediately afterwards, because it was a sort of a rough, sketchy, um, sort of outlined image of themselves, but they were able to see that we hadn't just lied to them; we had actually scanned them, and the data had turned into a 3D representation. Um, and it was it was interesting because a lot of people don't understand the 3D representation on a computer concept. Because you don't understand that, it means that you really don't understand how the printers work. So being able to show people how it worked, like physically, because somebody span around, we took lot, basically lots of pictures from lots of different angles, pieced them together into something inside a computer that can then be turned into a physical 3D object outside of the computer using this special 
printer machine um, was, you know, quite a powerful way of demonstrating the technology. Um, so that was, uh, yeah, no, it was good. Lots of interesting conversations we had with the public explaining what, what it was we were up to. Did you have specific goals for the event, or was it really to show what 3D printing is? Uh, so that was our overriding one. Uh, the secondary one was getting some stuff to put on our wall. We needed to make sure we got enough people through um, the process to so that we'd have enough um, data to put make enough models to go on the wall because uh, at that stage we had our, our design for the exhibition was pinned down and we were going to have a really big hole at the end of the exhibition if it hadn't panned out properly. I mean it would have been uh, yeah, we'd have had to have, because um, we, uh, the exhibition as a whole, we um, got, uh, I think it was about six, uh, no, four or six hundred objects in the exhibition, and um, I think I put some pictures of the exhibition um, across. Uh, you can see every single little thingy on that wall is a 3D printed object that was sent in from across the world. We sent out messages. Anyway, so the people were a hundred of those and that would have been a lot of extra things to find and um, more interpretation would have been needed. So uh, that was uh, that was a big sort of, it had to be a bit of a conveyor belt making sure we got the data so that we could do what we wanted with the exhibition. But having said that, we wanted it to be, you know, a relatively rich, interesting experience. So we had a 3D, we had a couple of 3D printers running. We had ex the experts um, of the scanning were chatting to people. And that's a big thing that we, with our events, we want people to meet experts in science and technology and have a chat with them and have, an, have a, a good interaction that sort of uh, at the very least makes people feel like science and tech is a positive thing and you know ultimately encouraging careers and um, uh, yeah giving people give, yeah getting, they don't necessarily have to come out with like a, a an outcome of knowledge but just having had a positive experience uh, that was related in some way to science is we, we feel that's a, a positive thing. Great. Um, we have one question from Georgina here. Uh-huh. And I think in a way you answered it because you're talking about a broad goal of um, getting people comfortable or, you know, like a, a really familiar or uh, accessible entry point into connections between science and technology. But I'm really wondering about whether your exhibition addressed some of the more... Uh, radical, if you will, aspects of 3D printing, which may really elude, I think, most of us, um, you know, in terms of being able to, at some point or now, print uh, prosthesis or uh, mm. uh, objects that have moving parts or even this notion that it's um, different from old uh, technology so that there's all kinds of issues that are very problematic in terms of like shifting economic uh, um, relations, uh, you know, as this this technology is put in the hands of maybe everyday people. Hmm. Uh, what happens to um, you know uh, economies in developing countries that had manufacturing? <clears throat> old, old uh, school manufacturing in place, so all those kinds of things. I'm wondering if your exhibition addressed any of these, you know, again, the breakthroughs but also the problematic aspects. Um, yeah, so we, yeah, so uh, you, the first bit of what you're saying basically outlined a large proportion of our exhibition. So we didn't maybe go into quite so much detail into um, uh, manuf uh, the future of manufacturing, um, we, we sort of left that question quite open. So the so we the, the four sections of the exhibition were an introduction because there are still a lot of people who don't know what 3D printing is. So you really have to explain it as a concept to start with. Then we moved into how it's going to ch how it, it could potentially change industry. So we looked at um, we aerospace um, and uh, sort of for for modelling, but also for practical items that will be used in an airplane. I and mean, one of our one of our items was a hinge. That it was three versions of a hinge, and how you showed optimization in um, just something small like a hinge in an airplane. But it can make an enormous amount of difference when you scale it up, um, and you include all the other examples of what could be changed in an airplane. Think how much lighter it could be, more um, econ yeah, so less materials, all of that kind of thing. Um, then we looked at the medical um, thing. So we had oh, we had all the prosthetics, so many prosthetics. Uh, we had teeth. We had um, uh, what else? We, uh, we had teeth, we had organs, we had uh, well the prototype organs that aren't really there yet, but sort of the first step in organ 
3D printing organs. We had 3D printed pills, um, so um, pharmaceutical industry, uh, which, you know, that could completely change an industry. I mean, if the, yeah, that could uh, revolutionize the way uh, you people with complex medical um, uh, uh, complaints um, sort of receive their medication and uh, yeah we have we I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't send you any bigger images because you you sort of if uh, there's one um, there's one image that was a sort of um, of the whole exhibition wall uh, with some people sort of silhouetted against it you can see in the middle there's sort of a sort of la slightly larger objects sort of grouped together those are all prosthetics um, of different types um, that uh, you can see and then the final section was how um, the spider section was how people um, so small businesses but also individuals can use 3d printing to make their lives better or more interesting or I mean a lot of it I mean a lot of the stuff it's just people entertaining themselves yeah. to be honest but at the same time the sort of personalization of um, uh, the personal, personalized objects, personalized um, things that you can buy online with a small business owner can make, you know, individual objects. They're not having to make a massive, a massive um, uh, load of an object and then sell them. They can make, they only have to make an object when somebody's actually bought it kind of thing. So that kind of message. And yeah, it, we, we talked about how, I think the conclusion we based, uh, within um, the online and also within the exhibition we had, um, uh, computer terminals where you could uh, delve a bit deeper into the content and uh, we had experts interview uh, interviews there where they sort of talked about how you know it's going to have a big impact but it's not going to revolutionize um, our manufacturing techniques just yet or possibly ever so I mean that was something we very much addressed um, interestingly uh, running in not in, uh, coincidentally at the same time the design museum in London was running an exhibition all about the future of manufacture where 3d printing was a big part mm -hmm. of that so um, and we obviously knew that so we had, we had a big event actually all about future of design and technology um, with lots of big wigs uh, about um, uh, because we had that connection with them so it's something that's very much being addressed but yeah it was yeah manufact I mean yeah taking over manufacture wasn't something wasn't the biggest focus of the exhibition it was more uh, look at how 3d printing can drive innovation within different sections of society so be it industry medicine and on a smaller scale with small businesses and at a personal level so um, yeah that was something we weren't able to address fully in every single event but I definitely had all of those conversations with people yeah. at the events we had because people just people are really fascinated by the whole thing and um, yeah it's a endlessly fascinating subject for for many people so shall I go on to the other event that yes. yeah, uh, I ran, which was Design in 3D. So this was, and I'm going to be perfect, uh, we got in an external company because um, I, yeah, uh, to run these sessions. So we work with them to create, they run um, mainly things in schools. So they teach school children about um, my, uh, sort of 3D printing, but they also do like laser cutting and other, uh, a few other sort of, very up-to-date techniques um, <coughs> for sort of tech subjects. Anyway, so the session we ran was aimed at family age groups. Um, so the idea being that you know an older child could handle it on their own, but very much uh, little kids could do it too, as long as there was a parent with them helping. Um, and uh, I think I sent f over a few photos of those. So um, there's some. There's lots of people sitting in front of computers on what look like picnic tables. So mm -hmm. the, the the whole theme of our event was um, theme of this event was creating because uh, it's summer it's it was summertime so it was creating um, accessories for picnics. Uh, so you had to design an innovative piece of cutlery because. Um, mm -hmm. That's important, uh, and you, it was made quite, quite basic. You had uh, the program they were set up. It's um, Google SketchUp, so it was something they could go away and try at home. And also, a lot of schools in the UK use Google SketchUp in their design and technology lessons. So it was something that we'd be. So we might be teaching. So some of them came knowing an awful lot more about design and tech than we did uh, about mm -hmm. Google SketchUp. They'd used it a lot at school. Um, some of them came, and some of them you knew. You know, the next couple of years in school, they'd be using it. So you would maybe giving them a little bit of a head start there. But it's very, because it's free to download, it's brilliant, because they can go, as long as assuming they've got access to computers, they can go home, download it, and um, 
uh, play with it to their heart's content and become, you know, the future of design and technology. Uh, and uh, yeah, so they um, played around with their, their, so they had different options. I think you could also do napkin holders as well, because that's an important feature of any picnic. Um, anyway, they did that for about half an hour or so, and then they could play for the next half hour. So we ran hour long sessions. And uh, then they did whatever they produce, we did print out, and uh, they got to take away either at the end of the session or because of the high volume of people they could come they could come back later and we give it to them or we would post it um, post their their little thingy to them so the items that um, this external company they were called black country atelier um, I can send you a link to their to their website if you're interested in the things they do um, they're really good at coming up with uh, small flat things because they print really quickly so there's a picture of a little boy staring at um, a 3d staring inside a 3d printer and you can see there's a there's something's just been printed a sort of orangey sort of um, picture in uh, design in 3d3 um, that that's his is his innovative piece of cutlery, um, which he's very excited about. And then uh, there's design in 3D4 is somebody looking very proud of their. I think it's the same. Is it the same kid? No, different kid. Uh, it, having printed a similar thing, so they got to choose aspects of it, and it just gave them a basic understanding of how this sort of thing could work. Um, and you can see in design in 3D2 um, the bank of printers we had set up, so people could watch. Things because we obviously were printing things all the time because you were constantly needing to um, print the uh, print what people had come up with, which was brilliant because ev even if people didn't make even if people couldn't join in with the sessions because there were limited spaces on the computers, um, they could just come in have a look at what was being printed. We could you know tell them well uh, tell them the te uh, tell them the um, technology and uh, the, the software we were using. Um, and they, yeah, so they, they at the very least got to see something being printed, which I think we, one of the things we've learned over the summer is a really powerful interaction because you don't really understand how a, an extrusion 3D printer works until you've really seen it in action, like live. Because I've seen that there's quite a lot of films on the internet of um, watching a printer um, print something, but until you've actually, you know, examined it from several angles because you've got one in front of you, it's, it can be really hard to sort of see how it works exactly. So that was quite a, that was an important interaction that I was really pleased we could, um, yeah, so I think several, so I think, uh, it was, um, we had hundreds of people do the workshops, oh, it was six, we did six days of workshops and there was, um, yeah, it was, it was a, hundreds of people saw that, but then thousands of people popped in just to see the printers printing, and we had to apologise and say they couldn't do the workshops because they were full up. So mm -hmm. at the very least, they saw something, even if they didn't get to have the more in-depth interaction. So, so each that was workshop was, all, was an hour only, or um, two hours? Did I miss that? Uh, so we did. It was it was a one hour um, a one hour um, workshop, and um, in that time they. Created something in 3D, and some of, uh, and then uh, the, their thing wasn't always printed within that hour. Um, some of them came back, or we had to post their their object to them. But they had a good play with the with the software. Um, and then we were running uh, four workshops a day, so it was four hour long workshops. We needed space, it's sort of half hours in between to reset and tidy up. But um, and how many uh, people did you have in each of the workshop, and and uh, how much staff did you kind of have to help people out? Um, so we had, uh, so we had 20, um, tw uh, yeah, I think we had, we had 20 laptops, so we could have, I mean, you could have a couple of, you know, siblings were more or less willing sometimes to share <laughs> if we were, if we lack space, but, um, so between, so usually just over 20, uh, children really and then their parents might be hanging around helping or if we were you know there were places available parents could have their own laptop too um, so we yeah roughly 20 people per session and then um, uh, so Black Country brought along there were four of them so I think in, in design in 3D one image um, you can see the guy at the front of the room he was sort of presenting and then there were uh, two other people helping um, sort of uh, you know when I know anyone got stuck um, and then we had one of one or two members uh, of um, of my team's staff uh, for starters we had to be there during the events for safety reason etc and um, making sh uh, sort of manning the front bit and then somebody running the printers as well so there was almost always somebody making sure the printers were doing what they were meant to be doing because you know by the time one's finished printing uh, by the time you've set up all the printers uh, printing whatever it is um, they're printing 
you know, you had to reset them all again because, um, and then there was sorting out envelopes for people who were having them sent home. So there was, from that kind of, so there was somebody doing all the logistic -y bits and pieces, somebody doing sign-ups and talking people through 3D printing, and then about three people uh, actually doing the workshops. So yeah, I mean, it's roughly five or six people we managed to, um, which worked okay. I mean, it, you could do it with one less person, but it, you, you were doing a lot more running around. But um, yeah. How, how many printers were there? Was a question. Uh, five. Oh no, that's a lie. Four. Four printers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, four printers. So um, we're all brought by Black Country. Uh, yeah, they're their printers. We, uh, the Science Museum, well, we do now, but we didn't then own any 3D printers, and it was uh, we now sell them in our shop. Which oh is my nice. uh, yeah, which is brilliant. Actually, it's a pity it wasn't set up before the summer because they uh, we've got they've got a showcase um, with the printer running more or less all the time, printing out bits and pieces, um, which is brilliant. But unfortunately, uh, our department didn't have um, the budget to justify buying printers just for a summer of activities, particularly because in the exhibition. Um, and also being able to you know they had their own printers, so I mean that was part of. Uh, yeah, that was part of the appeal of getting uh, external people in was, well, for starters, they had pre-existing workshops and um, uh, pre-existing workshops, so uh, uh, they were able to, um, so they had that sort of all set up, uh, they brought enough staff along and they had the printers, um, you know, that they knew how to use, because that was one of the things, uh, we, were, we were considering trying to set these up ourselves, but um, for starters we completely ran out of time because um, there were lots of, uh, for various reasons, uh, we ran out of time on these, and um, one of the things that we were told early on was don't just buy a printer and expect it to be fine. Like you really need to practice with your 3D printers because mm. they're, you know, they're like any piece of tech. You need to get used to them. You need to, when it stops, you you need to know why it stopped, and it takes time to work out all its little uh, little in, um, eccentricities. Um, and uh, yeah, so it, that was that was one of the, we we didn't really have the time or resources to um, get good at 3D printing by ourselves. So very much using experts to uh, to do all that for us was was brilliant. Pippa, I think that, uh, that's very good advice, uh, especially when we're experimenting and prototyping. Um, mm -hmm. I do have a question going back to the programming. Uh, any feedback from the audiences that participated, or um, any interesting observations? Um, on you know what they completed and was there any discussion at the end or you know how did how did you guys share out or did they just kind of take their piece and go what was the uh, well it varied I mean because there was a lot of hanging as you know a lot of people wanted to see their thing printed which um, or at least tell their children it was their thing being printed um, so there was a lot of time for interaction so we did I, I sort of I, yeah it's um it's, it's been a while since I've been in an educational role. Uh, uh, I was in my last job, but I'm more, more, more mostly behind a desk now. So it brought back all those happy memories of being public facing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, people were because all our activities were free, which helps because uh, people just expect slightly less, <laughs> which is nice. Um, having said that, we um, uh, it being the summer holiday the holidays, it does get very busy. So you know, it was upset. It was unfortunate. I, yeah, there were several. I made several children burst into tears when I told them the sessions were full, which was unfortunate. But then, <laughs> which just shows how brilliant our things were that uh, people. Were I, I, I was upset. yeah. <laughs> the people who were trying to get a print or trying to use Google yeah. SketchUp, you know. No, 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 no. They no, no crying, no crying from frustration from our technology. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we had a lot of. Uh, there was an awful lot of just chatting about. So people were just really interested because the printers themselves is something quite interesting just to stand and watch. But um, and there were enough of us about, um, particularly once the session had ended and you, they weren't teaching anymore. It meant that all those people could have just talk about the technology and um, yeah. So we were able to have like you know really quite in depth conversations with uh, some members of the public. Others, yeah, they just left afterwards because you know there's the whole of the rest of the museum to see. I mean our bit was great, but they'd come for the they'd come to see other things too, yes. and uh, so they um, uh, sort of rushed off and maybe came back to pick up their their little innovation in cutlery but um, didn't didn't necessarily have to hang around um, but yeah they were there was enough time um, for, for people who really wanted to have a chat about it to have a really in-depth talk about uh, I mean everything that came up in that we were talking about just now about what we covered in the exhibition so everything uh, around that and sort of people and we also um, I don't think I've 
for we had a we had a table full of um, bits and pieces that um, uh, they pr we, they printed off. So cups and bowls and spoons and uh, sort of uh, vaguely sort of. Um, uh, picnic themed um, bits and pieces so kids could play with those as well and also those were quite good starting points like the cups we were we could you know tell them were completely not watertight so they'd be terrible also you don't know what's <laughs> it yeah so we were able to sort of talk about the um, the pros and cons of 3d printing so you know brilliant as a prototype but you know it's hardly gonna I w it, it'll dissolve if it goes in the dishwasher so um, you know that's that's not great uh, which is so you were able to yeah have a nuanced talk. and uh, the kid I mean it's a sort of subject that because the parents know as little as their kids do mm. you're not you're not having to split the conversation necessarily you can talk to but you the levels your the levels of conversation are, um, are pitched at is actually yeah people people don't know very much about it which means you're ex the way you explain it to a 10 year old isn't that different from the way you're explaining it to their parent which is really useful <laughs> as mm. a uh, yeah from an explaining point of view um, sorry, did that answer your question? I slightly lost. <laughs> lost no, I, I think you answered it. Other questions at this point? Anyone have? A... Well, we don't want to take up a whole lot more of your time, but I know you have a couple <laughs> pro more programs that you were that were a little different. Um, yep. So we had our. So I, I'll be. Uh, so we had our. So those are the two things that I organised myself, um, and then we had our uh, the to tie it all into. Um, uh, to tie it all into um, a whole, I mean, it was a, the the concept of a summer in 3D uh, across the museum um, was our marketing department's idea. I mean, we we had a big meeting with myself and a lot of different departments who were able to contribute to it. Um, they um, uh, they uh, uh, so we uh, uh, to bring it all together as a whole theme. So for start, it was marketed. Um, so if you see our if a uh, uh, did I send? I sent over a, um, a PDF of um, the folding trail and also the so you could so people so these leaflets with um, 3D summer were distributed all over the museum so and also given out to people at the entrance when um, they got there they were sort of aged, it was it was aimed at families so you could there was sort of a, an activity on the back where you could fold it up into um, a thing but there were also on I mean, our learning department had several activities uh, going on I think more or less every day so on the back of um, on the back of it was the list of activities and when they were happening this did get quite confusing because um, I mean we ran our our things were for sure short periods of time so the scanning happened for three days which um, was great if you were there for one of those three days but was basically it, it, for the rest of the summer it was very much it just seemed like we were telling you what you'd missed by looking at the back <laughs> of the leaflet um, and then the our scanning ones were it was it was three days in one week and then three days in another week and that did get a bit confusing but um, uh, yeah and, and but the learning activities were quite consistent we also had this trail around the museum because um, Looking at uh, different aspects of uh, different way, uh, sort of different ways of looking at um, 3D, and um, uh, we also have an IMAX that's 3D, which is useful to drive people to because they have to pay for tickets. And uh, so there were lots of things on the trail that you could do, uh, which made it a bit more of an involved experience. So people didn't just feel like it was a slightly odd theme for a summer. There was activities along it. So our learning department had some really fun things with uh, some origami activities. Um, and I think some rocket based activities as well there were a, a few sort of a few maker kind of activities which um, were very much not related to 3d printing but I mean when you look at 3d broadly as a subject I think my first comment in the in our meeting that we had was um, well of course the museum I mean the, the point of a museum is seeing things in 3d like the actual physical object is is 3d so um, that in itself makes a museum special as opposed to seeing it in a picture or um, just hearing about an object, actually physically seeing it, it's obviously a very powerful experience, um, more so than just seeing the picture. So yeah, it sort of tied it together as an experience, but um, it was also a way of uh, on the given the the, yeah, the activities throughout the summer weren't brilliantly consistent. Just because I mean, for budget wise, there was only so many we could we could put on, and also the scanning um, because it involved bringing in experts in scanning. You know, we could only monopolize their time for so much for so long. Um, I mean, that's that's the that is the problem with the activities that we run 
um, in my department is that because we get experts in, they have day jobs that they have to go back to. Um, yeah. So it, it's always for very short periods of time. Um, whereas learning, of, uh, because they create their own activities, um, they're able to run them for as long as they've got the staff to run them, which is means they have more flexibility. So um, yeah, so you can see how it's sort of tied together as a whole. Did Sorry? You, what, would you remind us what department you're a part of? Uh, I'm in the contemporary science department, which is part of the exhibitions department. So our learning, our learning department covers mostly most uh, sort of covers activities, and we have a gallery that's um, uh, it's called Launchpad, which is it involves a lot of buttons and experience. So it's a very hands-on. It's our hands-on gallery. That's how we describe it. Um, and we have a lot of uh, explainers, um, and they they move across, all over the museum, but they sort of concentrated there. So we've several galleries that are very much learning galleries. So they're mainly aimed at children and uh, young people um, and they tend to be more hands-on physical sorts of things they also yeah do a lot of they do a lot of activities and shows and things um, but they're very separate to because um, I'm in the exhibitions department we my department's a bit of an oddity in that we do events most of the exhibitions departments um, just make it physical exhibitions uh, they, it, it, it's, that's not. It, it's becoming less true um, across the museum. We're t we're tying in way more events now with our new exhibits because it gives people a richer experience. But traditionally, um, the learning department did the events and exhibitions did exhibitions. But that's that's changing slowly, which means there are quite a few blur. There's a lot of blurred lines now um, and sort of crossovers, which. Um, is doing things like this helps helps us sort of come together and work together, which we're doing a lot more than than I think we used to. So uh, yeah, it's still as it's still very much a learning kind of experience combining the two because we're I mean uh, from a managerial structure as well, it's very separate two entities. Although there's lots of working together. Did you, but, I mean, yeah. Did you collaborate on like the trail, or was it pretty much separate that it was kind of decided you you your team was going to do certain things and they were going to do other things and then they'd be put together on a pamphlet. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, we uh, after the after our initial meeting um, where sort of the themes were decided and we suggested what we might or might not be able to do, our marketing department coordinated it as a whole, so it had a bit it had a sort of theme to it. Um, but um, it was marketing and press, and then um, yeah, I mean, I. I, uh, we all checked the uh, we checked obviously fact checked the um, the leaflets and a few issues popped up um, there about that. Um, but uh, it was um, uh, it was yeah it was fairly fairly separate. And I think that would be I mean that would be something a sort of lesson learned thing is that it would have been better if we'd all met again to check you know just to share uh, just sharing ideas. Sometimes saying something out loud in front of someone else they're like oh of course have you considered this or that or if you haven't actually said it out loud in front of them it, that conversation would never have happened. So I think we probably should have had another physical meeting um, as opposed to it then all just being coordinated through one or two people uh, in our press and marketing department. But having said that as a whole it did pan out really well and um, uh, we had, it, you know, we saw an increase in numbers. Um, there was a fair amount of social media traffic. We had a competition, a competition as well, to um, for somebody to design, uh, uh, to invent some um, uh, something to. I think it was to help to, to help in the uh, to help you in the summer. The winner was um, a young lady who uh, created a um, it was a, it was a it was an item to wash your feet when you after you came out of the sea, so your um you didn't have to put sandy feet back into your shoes, um and uh, that got that went in that went in our exhibition as well. So it was there was a lot of coordination and um, things, but it was it yeah, it could have possibly held together slightly. Better. I mean, it was. It's. It's. It'd be. I'm not fully sure how the public. Um, I think they. They. They didn't see any. Any problems with it. It hung, hung together well for them. But it could have. Yeah. There could have been more coordination. I think. Well, it's, it's always good for us all to be reflective <clears throat> and know how things could go better. And hopefully, the public mm. gets gets best out of it. So it's. I think that we all read you that it went well, but there's always ways to do things better. Yeah. Um, any questions about this? How about um, since uh, we'll let you go in a few minutes? Uh, any like overall lesson learned, or what's next for you in 3D at the Science Museum? 
Um, so we've got some events coming up uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, so for uh, I, I'm not quite sure if you have the equivalent in the US, but we have uh, we have half term holidays. So in, we have our big you know Christmas, Easter, summer holidays, and then in between those we have a week. Kids have a week off. So um, our half terms are crazy busy. So for our March the first week of March, we are having. Um, uh, so we're looking, I'm not quite sure of the details, uh, it's a colleague of mine who's doing it, but he's he's still firming it up. We're going to have um, some people who have been developing, men th uh, using 3D uh, printing in medicine, um, to, are going to come in and um, uh, chat to the public about it with their with their objects, and I hope a 3D printer, because people really do love seeing 3D printers. Um, as I say, we're continuing to sell our 3D printers um, in, um, in the museum, and um, uh, yeah, we've got one other event. So the the exhibition will finish in um, uh, at the it'll be June because um, we're developing the next thing to replace it right now. So um, uh, yeah, I mean it won't be it won't necessarily be it for 3D printing in the museum, but uh, for the moment it'll I think it I think it'll crop up a lot more um, in particularly in our gallery being contemporary science. But uh, for the yeah by the end of uh, yeah by next uh, by this summer it will be yeah the end of our sort of 3D printing year as it were. Ravaganza. Uh, yes, exactly. All right, any final words for Pippa? Are we saying your name right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I ask now. <laughs> well, great. Well, we thank you very much and thanks Carolina for set it, setting this up and um, I we look forward to learning more and using this in in uh, developing our own programs. Yeah, and uh, any more questions, feel free to email or call. Uh, be very happy to answer anything else you want Great. to know. Great. Well, Great. thank you. Uh, yeah. Thanks for your time. Right. Okay. Bye. 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 Take care.